Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is the Wix online meeting 173, getting our way halfway through July, which I guess is most of the way through the year. No, at least halfway around the year. I always thought July was the middle, but because my mom's birthday is in July, and I was like, oh, it's halfway to Christmas. But that's not actually true because it's the seventh month. And you know what? I'm like 40 years old, and I'm still getting this wrong. Anyway, this meeting is being recorded for those of you that aren't with us right here, right now, on our brand new home, Twitch. We're trying this live streaming thing out out of Skype for Business and into Twitch. I'll talk about it a little bit. Um, and then we'll do triage like we always do. We'll talk about Voto V1 being released. Um, then we'll do our usual questions and comments, if anybody has them, that kind of good stuff. Um, I'm a little excited about this meeting because I've been having a lot of fun with Twitch, despite lots of little glitches. Um, if you are watching this, if you've joined us since the beginning, like Jacob, who's always here, thank you, Jacob, you notice that we started about 20 minutes late due to lots of different technical problems. Um, but we think it's all working now, although we won't know until the recording is up on YouTube for sure. Um, if you see anything or hear anything that's really kind of weird, uh, let us know. Um, I think we know we have a problem with Bob and Sean's mics. They're not quite sounding quite right. We'll, we'll play with that um, later. Uh, there's, but honestly, I've had a decent amount of fun given the fact that this was kind of forced upon us with the deprecation of Skype for business. Um, and the forcing of use of Teams, the moving to this open broadcasting software and what you can do with Twitch and things like that seems seems like there's a lot of potential, and I'm actually pretty excited to explore a little bit of that and where we can go for that. So if you want to watch us live, twitch.tv and Fire Giant Co., um, and if you want to watch it later, we upload the recording of this meeting to the YouTube Wix toolset user. So you can always go and find those if you're not able to make this time slot. Now, you may have noticed also, I'll, I'll mention it here, uh, that I sent out a uh, survey to uh, the Wix users mailing list, and I think Wix devs as well, asking people about the meeting. Did they know it's there? Do they ever attend? Can they attend? And if there's a better time slot. We're looking at another time slot because Sean is going to be down under for a while, and so we're trying to figure out a good time that he can still join with Bob and I being on the uh, northern hemisphere <laughs> Um, and on basically the opposite side, of, almost the opposite side of the world. So we're, we're still working at the time. I've got a lot of good feedback in that survey, um, a lot of different feedback. Uh, but the Europeans were pretty clear that most of the time slots that are going to work for Australia will not work for them, which, of course, does not surprise me, does not surprise us. But um, we'll work it out. I think what we may find we do is we pick two time slots and we switch them per every other week or something like that so we can kind of hit different people every other time. But of course, the meetings are recorded and put up to YouTube if you can't make this time slot. Um, but times may change and we're going to continue to work our way into how the best way to work inside Twitch. But all in all, given the um, frustration that I was having that because we were being forced out of something that was just working, Skype for Business, I'm actually pretty happy and excited about where we are now. All right, so that's what we're going to talk about Twitch today. I'm sure it will come up again in the future as we work out the technology and glitches. And I hope this meeting goes off really well. Now we actually see all of this in the end because um, we won't know until uh, we get there. But I think now let's get out of the meta conversation about how these meetings happen. Let's actually go do our work. We skipped last week because it was July 4th. So we have a few more um, issues to triage. Uh, we'll decide if we want to do them all today since we got a late start. Um, I'll let you guys kind of sort that out as we work our way through. But uh, Bob, are you ready to go to the, uh, to the web? Let's go. All right, here we are. Several issues. Um, I figured out you could sort these things in the other order, so I actually put the oldest on top now instead of the oldest on the bottom. Um, and... We'll go. So I can start from the top instead of scrolling from the bottom up. Um, of course, now that just screwed up my bookkeeping, but all right. <laughs> Sorry, I should have warned you. <laughs> um, uh, this was marked, uh, the labels are cleared on this because someone has said that they're actually interested in like trying to address this um, in three. Of course, we take the fix in four, no problem, and the fix should go there first. Um, would we bring this back to three? Uh, well, well, the, the comment, comment from five, five years ago still stands as long as it's opt-in. Yeah, we can't break oh, compatibility. Oh, right. Yes. So it would have to be an opt-in switch. Yeah. Right. 
And this is this is just the the for generated IDs like directory and file IDs. Yeah, if you use right? auto ID, you don't have this problem. Well, uh, well, except you do. It's not just GUIDs, right? It's it's the generated IDs for directories and files. Yeah, you know, now that now that you're mentioning all this, let's put it in four. And honestly, we if we go to four, we don't need the switch, right? Just fix it, make it FIPS compliant, carry on. Right, right, right. I think that's the answer. So I think that means that's what we have to take back to Wix devs. I'd be okay with taking it because I don't think it's a it's it's not a big change. It's just it has to be backward compatible. All right, I'm I'm inclined to take it to four, but we can do that. Um, Sean, do you have any opinion? Not really. No. Yeah, I knew that was going to be the answer. <laughs> not very good for having a tiebreaker when he doesn't have an opinion. <laughs> um, I, I don't care strongly. So if you want to uh, take that message back, Bob, I'm good with that. Okay, sure. Cool. Let's see what so, happens. Um, I need to solve these. I've not had time to get into these. Um, bundle doesn't up detect earlier. Bundle upgrade different GUID style. Yeah, so Nier ran this down. And he found out that you can sneak the bad GUID through a loc variable or a bind variable. Um, so we should take this in. We should definitely fix this in four. Um, I, I, I added a link to a blog post I wrote 11 years ago that you know, said the same thing. If you bypass the compiler, you miss out on the compiler's error checking. Yeah, so, I mean, and in 4, we're doing more and more in the back end, um, the binder and things like that. So I think we probably should bring this along in 4 and make sure this is solved correctly in 4. Beyond just the bundle? Uh, well, certainly the bundle, and kind of keep it in mind for most things. Silence. Bob is not uh, I'm, I, I don't. I, I prefer, you know, like we're going to do a a real fix. Well, the fix is to do all of the normalization. Any normalization that the compiler does would do that could be affected by variables to be done later, like right. as late as possible. So, like. Good normalization has to be done in the the binder in the back end. Mm -hmm. So yes, I, I think that's the the solution to all this. So let's put it in four. You can give it to me because I am doing these kinds of things, um, and I will make sure that bundles get this. And I will look at all the other kind of processing we're doing on certainly for um, normalization of um, GUIDs everywhere, and we'll tackle this there. Don't know that I can get all loc variables in one pass, though, because there's so many different places. All right. Uh, VS 2019 fails in an offline environment, and I think we've come down to they just don't have the um, certificates, right? Yeah, kind of so far. I mean, there's the newest bug um, has something a little different, possibly. Because everything's working fine, obviously, if you're connected and then you just, I verified this, that if you disconnected the machine and you did it, everything worked fine. Um, so it's just a matter of if you're completely disconnected. If, if your certificates are out of date, the Visual Studio extension installer Will not install a signed package. Well, the no, newest bug was saying something about revocation. Like it seems to be trying to get the latest revocation list. Yeah. Then or revocation yeah. list. Sorry, it's both. Uh, you, well, if you're offline, yeah, you can't you can't check. Yeah. The revocation list. Um, but that newest bug also says that he has the um the the full chain is present. So 
I don't know what that means as as far as you know, it will it still fail if if I don't know if it's if if the revocation list is stale that forces an online check that fails and then V6 installer fails. I don't not sure what's involved. You know what? I think they should send this to the Visual Studio team. Yeah, I mean, I guess it's their design choice. Yeah, I mean, and then it may come back that it's like, well, you guys need to do X, Y, or Z. But I don't, I, I think the only alternative is at this point is don't sign the packages. Um, which is where Burn ended up doing for all of its constituent packages. It doesn't val val validate signatures because, or it doesn't block the install. Um yeah, well, Jacob, this is a fallback to that. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. We had an ability to get the same security that we needed without having this do the certificate validation um signed. Um yeah, let's let's send this to the Visual Studio. Let's send this out to Visual Studio for now and then we'll see where it comes back. Cause I, I don't know what else I mean, there's nothing else we can do. except not sign. And I, I, I guess, I mean, I'm not really excited about doing that. Well, someone on Wix users requested that? Yeah. I mean, because V6 installer can't handle it, people are asking for it now that they're having right. this problem. So this is this is really a Visual Studio problem. Unless they say that we should not sign things. Like if Visual Studio says, oh, yeah, 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 don't sign because there's all these problems, then then we should break that. Well, I mean, if that's their answer, then they should stop it from checking the certificates. <laughs> I agree with you there, too. But it and is. don't sign is a kind of... Uh, an unlikely response. It does seem unlikely. That's why I, I'm. I don't think this is going to be us in the end. So, all okay, right. I'm fine with that because I agree. There's nothing more we can do, and even trying to diagnose the problem is like I. <laughs> yeah, this is the problem. With, this is the problem. Like with MSI, we can actually do things with V6 saw it's like um, yeah, we don't get to do anything. <laughs> like, right. If it doesn't work, Visual Studio has a bug. Almost always at this point. I, I've, there's been there's been very few bugs in the in, our input to the installer. So, all right. So let's send that off to Visual Studio, and we may get work in that. You know, like, ah, don't sign. But whatever. Um, full width form double quotes cannot be displayed correctly on the bootstrapper screens. Yeah, I've got no response and with useful information, so. Yeah. I, should we even wait anymore? No. It's been a month. Yeah. I, I'm with you. Error uh, can while. Can you match to 5670? 5670. 5670? Sorry, it's, one of, it's closed. Um, can't resolve candle 1150. Five six seven zero. Yes. Uh, what we're we looking for? Oh, the someone has asked. Can we have this reopened? Mail list not in response. Won't answer it. Old correct way. Oh. Yeah, this is where the service install didn't end up matching, or our version of service install didn't end up matching what the Windows installer did. Config. Service config, sorry, didn't match exactly what theirs did in the end, and nobody's gone back to our service config to add the things that theirs added after the fact or whatever, or not after. I mean, yeah, after ours. After, after ours, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's a feature. Someone should add it. It'd be great if someone added this feature. Well, specifically, the new warning is. Oh, I see. 
they want to trim the warning down. So if you're using the failure actions of that, don't. Hmm. And that requires making a judgment call about what the documentation that says it doesn't work is actually saying. It's like what parts of this new MSI functionality that is broken is actually broken and not going to get fixed and what new functionality works reliably says the people that won't fix it. I don't know. Yeah. Um, that's a good point. I think the answer to this is we should just add, someone should just add delayed auto start. Sure. Sure. And if someone wants to add the documentation until that happens, I, I would take that change too. That notes that. The other thing doesn't support auto start, so you're just kind of stuck until someone adds auto start. Or use the, you know, whatever the Windows installer says doesn't work, you know, use that. In the meantime, suppress the warning. So I agree, we've kind of worked our way through a, a bad spot until we do this. So, but yeah, it should be improved. Um, so what do we do with this issue? Um, I'm fine just making it the ad. Delayed auto start. Yeah, I think that's the response to him. It's like, you know, yeah, the best option here would be for someone to go in and add the delayed auto start. And nobody has signed up to do that work yet. He's not wrong, or she. Yeah. This person is not wrong. Agreed. And yeah. All right. Cool. Uh, oh, I'm on the wrong. Wrong tab. All right. Oh, where was I? Error. Oh, so this is the other one you guys are talking about. No. Oh, no. There's a newer, newer one. I'm sorry. Yet another one. Or uh, actually, is that one? I don't know. Oh, my goodness. So much. So you nice. confused me by the whole doing it in a, in a different Oh, order. no. This one is... No, you're right. This one is... Error already exists. The CA targets already exist. You need to investigate why that file exists. And that was 30 days ago. So I think we can close this as they probably copied bug. this file by hand and got themselves in this problem. Right, right, right. That's my bet. Because there probably was a point in time when we were not copying that file and you needed to do it by hand and then they forgot that they copied it by hand. And the Visual Studio or, Installer is a very poor installer and it won't figure out how to reference count files and it won't overwrite them. It just blocks everything. Or it's always been sport for people to uh, you know, manually create votive for the next version of Visual Studio. That's true. Um... Project property visual Studio does not handle dark theme well. That is true. It does not. I have noticed the same thing. I expect the product pages to behave like any other and actually be readable. Yeah, you can go fix it. <laughs> That's fine. Yeah, put it in 4X and we can fix it if they want. Oh my goodness, another one of these. <sighs> what do we do with these screen or, 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 or reader things? Keyboard navigation <laughs> things. Keyboard navigation, is that us? Probably, Ooh, yeah. Links within the software's license term section are not no, accessible via that, keyboard? That's going to be tricky. Yeah, well, that one that one probably is not us, or better, there's probably nothing we can do about it. Close is not accessible via keyboard on set accessible window. Really? You can't even tab to it? Sorry. Sorry, I'm I mean, to... Do you want to go, go through these one at a time? I guess. I, I thought it was like, ah, but... I, I, Agreed, but I think there are some that we can like exactly the, like the this one. Rich text we can probably just get rid of. But now this one, um, I believe that this is a real thing. I don't think we handle focus correctly in Theme Util. Oh, this is Theme Util. Yes, it of course is not made very clear by the bug report, but this is a bundle using Wix standard VA. Okay. Um, yeah, all right, cool. We should put this in Forex. It should get fixed. Oh, though they are in 3.7, so that's kind of old. Um, yeah, and, and I might be tempted to just say, you know. What's the what? chances that we fix this in anything it's not, then? 
not no. very good. Now, yeah, not that said, good. there there is at least one change I know of, and I don't recall which version it's in, and it might not come out until Wix 4, but there was a fix there in activation. But I don't think any of these bugs are affected by that. Yeah, all right. So so we feel there's a good chance that this probably still exists in, in the code. I think so. Yeah. All right, then we put it in 4, and... Yeah, someone should fix that. That'd be great. Narrators. So this is this is the same person. Okay, great. So this is all with Standard VA, which is important because we actually can fix these things, um, right. which is different than Windows Installer UI. Okay. So you you think that this is probably an issue as well then? Well, now here I have no idea. All right. I have because I have no idea about about narrator and yeah. of course it requires windows 10 and i don't know yes yeah, navigate to all the controls of the setup set up successful it's not a pop-up window window verify if narrator read the information about setup successful or not i don't know what that means narrator should provide information narrator is not providing any information i don't i have no idea what this means providing information is not very useful. So I don't know what this bug report is actually saying. I don't know what information narrator is supposed to provide about it. Well, I, I could see that when you get to the final, when you get to the setup successful page, there's nothing that tells you that the page is successful. Right? There's no, narrator will not read to you that you're on the successful setup page, setup successful page. Because there's no control that says success. Sure, there is. Narrator's a Windows thing, Jacob. There is. So, all right. Well, I mean, that's it's a string, and again, that's why I'm. I'm yeah, this is a matter of narr using narrator. It's not saying that narrator is not reading the controls because it says navigate to all the controls. The navigator will read the text. Ah. So I'm. Yeah. You know, Normally, you can't. Give focus to a label, so it won't read. Like if you associate the label with something, then it'll read it. But I don't think you can do that in Windows, actually. That's interesting. I mean, I know you can't provide focus, but I thought narrator was different. Or maybe that's it. Maybe it's they're expecting. I don't know. Uh, sorry, we're 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 speculating based on you know a bug report that probably makes sense to someone who's an expert in. Fine, in Let, let's let's have them respond and say how how would one correctly fix this? Someone that understands accessibility, how would you go about correctly fixing this? And let's give this you know put that in here um, and put it in four, and hopefully they'll respond and tell us how to do this. Or someone's going to have to do a lot of research in Narrator and learn the accessibility stuff and, you know, make the immutal handle that, which will be a task at some point in time that we probably should do. Um, okay. So you want to take this even if we don't? Because, you know, the person hasn't responded after three weeks. Yeah, they're not coming back, are they? It's like drive-by. Yeah, the same thing, yeah, the same, t same thing happened the last time we got a drive-by dumping of, of accessibility bugs. Yeah, they don't really care. Well, their their job was complete when they opened the bugs. Yeah. Um, I, we still should put the ask in there and then we'll put it in 4X and be like, yeah, I mean, it would be great if someone that understands um, accessibility would improve the accessibility for any things that we're messing up. It should be done. It'd be yeah, great. Yeah. And that's just where we're at on these, I think. It's like, yeah, look, there are these set of issues, these set of accessibility issues that should be tackled. What does it take? I don't know. Someone with knowledge and or time to go learn it. I guess it's kind of what we're looking at. Which is okay. the same as the last issue we were just talking about. Closed but not accessible. Same thing. Well, no, because the, sorry, I, I do bucket these differently. The the 
keyboard accessibility anyone can look at. Um, and and the behavior is simple, you know, okay. either a control has focus or it doesn't. Um, and and at least that bug report was more explicit about the problem. The narrator stuff is harder because if you're not an accessibility expert, specifically in you know terms of visual accessibility, then it's like you know. So the, most of the rest of these that talk about the about narrator are making assumptions that you know what is supposed to happen. Yep. So, um, That's what I'm saying. And, Someone will have to go learn it, or someone's going to have to teach us the right way to do it. Either way, we're going to have to learn. <laughs> I, um, okay. I, I'm just I, saying that I, I mean, it, I there's that. To fix this issue that we agree should be fixed requires a body well, of knowledge that none of us have today. Yes. And I guess it also follows from that that we don't have enough information to say whether it should be fixed. So, yeah, I, true. If we had the body of knowledge in this, we would be able to say whether it should be fixed or not as well. Right. Right. The okay. Name I'm is fine not with that. defined for product logo. So this is another thing in the page that something is not set. Yeah. Or the narrative focus should not land on logo. Yeah. Again, it's like okay. I don't know why you can navigate to the logo. It's narrator. That um, much. Yeah. But maybe there's some way of getting narrator to skip it. Well, there must be because it's like we're not providing information about some. It's like, hey, we're providing information about a logo that we don't, but we're not providing information about the title of the, you know, the page to say whether you're successful or not. Right. Kind of problem. Um, this says you cannot access links inside the EULA, which could be possible. Yeah, but I don't. I'm. I'm. I don't know that we can do anything about this. I don't know, but we own the rich edit box that's being drawn, at least. So. Well, no, we own the fact that we're using a rich edit box. Windows well, owns the rich edit box. Right. So keep this. Yeah, I. I mean, we. It turns into at least try, look at okay. it. You know, Jacob brought up the point that maybe you have to implement I accessible to you know get into some of these things. There is I. I Sure. I, uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm not saying we can't. I'm just um, uh, sorry. The rich edit control just seems it's really unlikely that there's anything we can do. But okay, you're right. We have to investigate. Yeah. Well, Donald has to. When user selects OK, browse for folder pop up. The keyboard focus is not visible on the install location editable field. All right. Actual result. Hit OK, but the keyboard focus is not visible. Keyboard focus is only visible over the install location editable field when the user presses one extra tab. I don't know that that's okay. Like they want it to automatically be inside the install location. I don't know that we control this UI though. When the user presses escape, keyboard focus does not land on the browse button, which is the origin. Yeah, so this is some very fine, probably expected behavior for if you're navigating by a keyboard only. Yeah, okay, I mean, yeah. That's, this seems more nice to have than the other ones um, in the install location. Name does not define for software license document. Yeah, Jacob, I agree. They they want careful focus usage based on which you know, which I think makes sense because you're like, yeah, if I'm using the keyboard, I'd like to be more efficient. I'm like, yeah, okay. Um, name is not correctly defined. Verify what name? Name name is not correctly defined for software license term document section. Oh, name is correctly name should correctly define Microsoft software license term document section. Yeah, okay. So this is more narrator go. They want it 
back on the edit control on OK so the screener reads back their selection for confirmation. Oh, interesting. Okay, I, I see that, Jacob. That's Yeah, this is, yeah, I mean, sure I could learn a lot about accessibility. Whoever fixes this either knows a lot about accessibility or will learn a lot about it doing this. I mean, it makes a lot of sense. Narrator focus order in scan mode is not logical to move from title after cancel button. Okay. Um, all these are, yeah, like, someone wants to undertake keyboard navigation, screen reader type thing, there's a set of awesome opportunity for you in Wix with all these things. Um, Visual Studio Code extension, that's awfully large. Which did not have a central Wix. In this case, small teams have only one use a Wix command line, which is not as comfortable as a GUI tool. Helped us, but not so comfortable as it could be. I'd like to get an extension for Visual Studio Code as they created Visual Studio Pro community. Okay, that's nice. Do we keep this? I mean, there's nothing in this other than, I mean, this is a gigantic thing with no feature description at all. Hello? Uh oh, have we lost Bob? Sean, are you still there? I'm still here. Uh oh, we lost Bob. Hmm. Maybe. Yeah, I can't see Bob. That's weird. I was wondering why it got so quiet. I wasn't getting any pushback on these things anymore. <laughs> All right, I do believe we lost Bob, but I don't think it's because of Twitch. All right, I think that means that we're going to stop here, Sean, at this Visual Studio extension, and we'll pick up there in two weeks. Sound good to you? Yeah, that's good. All right, because we don't have our tiebreaker anymore, and we'll have to go from there. I'm I wonder if Bob's machine restarted or if he lost network connectivity or what. So, um, but that means he's going to miss the party. <laughs> um, as we move on from triage, because Vota V1 has been released, um, which was, this is just such a massive undertaking for something that should, none of these problems should have been problems. Um, I've spent every day for the last probably three weeks, maybe not every day, at least every other day, for the last three weeks, working with the Visual Studio Marketplace team to address all of the little policy changes they made that totally hose the ability to upload the uh, Wix tool, the votive extensions to the Visual Studio Marketplace. Now, a lot of the problems that we had there were because the Wix toolset has been around for a long time and got migrated from the gallery under a different name and then just kind of moved its way through and they've been slowly locking down that certain parts of your extension manifest much must match what is in the marketplace and so on. And because of the migration of the Wix toolset, there was this disconnect between those. So what we had in our manifest did not match what they had on the marketplace. And there was no way to fix the marketplace to the correct values which were in our manifest. And then there were lots of other problems. And so essentially be I'd send one email per day and then a day or a day and a half, two days later, they'd get a response saying, okay, now you need to do this. I'd try that, it wouldn't work spend some time on it. So it was just a tremendous undertaking to finally get the VS Market uh, Visual Studio extension, aka Vota, published the Visual Studio Marketplace. Fortunately, by the end, uh, they were, um, they had come to realize how much trouble <laughs> that I had had and they were becoming much more responsive, which certainly helped in the last week. So the net net is that we now have Votive V1 published up there for all, from Visual Studio 2010 all the way through Visual Studio 2019 support. Everything um, is all baselined. All the latest uh, Votive code is up there. 
and um, going. So yay, if I wasn't so tired of working on Votive, which I don't like working on anyway, because I don't like I don't work on Votive. It's not my thing. It's not what I do. Just getting the silly thing published was a massive undertaking. Yay, it's done. I hope people are enjoying it. I know we're having problems with signing, and hopefully the Visual Studio guys will fix this, uh, whatever is the issue with signing. Um, and maybe we'll have to release another Votive to undo signing, I guess, might be the next thing we have to do, which just seems terribly wrong. But anyway, all that. Yay, Votive V1. I uh, hope people are enjoying it, um, working our way through it, and uh, yay, I'm done. <laughs> I'm so done with this. Oh, it took so much effort to get this working. So, on that note, is there anything else people want to talk about? Questions, comments they have, uh, things going on. Hopefully this new Twitch thing is going to work out well. Hopefully our recording up to YouTube is uh, clean and good. And um, everything just is now stable. We're right at 10.30, which is usually our, our max end point. Um, granted, we started about 20 minutes late so uh, this meeting is not an hour long i guess it's what don't do math on stream i've always heard but what's that uh 40 minutes then 40 minute meeting that's pretty good especially since we skipped last one uh you have anything going on sean no no i, I think know. we might have bob back oh do we have a bob back ah yeah. all right the it's it's uh storming here so i uh, had a power outage that Code like network connectivity. Understood. Well, I hope all goes well for the rest of the day. Um, yeah. You just missed my my happy tirade about being done with Votive. I, I, I heard I heard bits of it, yeah. and I've heard it before. Yeah. Yes, yeah. as it's been happening every, every for the time. last you know month and everything else. Uh, uh, and 2017 happened as well. So. Oh gosh, yes, just so much. So. All right, I really don't want to dwell on it anymore. I want to look forward to happy stuff working. I hope that means that Twitch is working right now. We'll know soon. Um, that's all I have. I guess we'll be back in two weeks. So that'll put us on the 1st of August. Sound good? Hopefully, Sean will find a way to connect from Australia. Um, yeah. We, I, we'll see if this, if you can connect at this time slot or not, or whatever we work out. But we'll discuss that um, around on what time slot we want to pick, given that Sean's moving down under. Um, and we have two weeks for that. So, two weeks, next meeting. We're going to be here again, Twitch, if you want to watch it live. Otherwise, if you guys are watching us on YouTube, well, nothing changed for you. Um, except, oh, well, <laughs> except, hey, well, you know, a little different look. The chat is integrated a little bit differently, things like that. Um, so, until then... Two weeks from now, you guys take it easy. Uh, I'll talk to you later. Bye. Bye. Bye.